Hey, it's Antichamber from the Vex Forum, and you guys asked for it, so today we're taking a look at my robot. Close up. So, <clears throat> firstly, we have the claw, um, and uh, basically, it's just a ton of bits of Lexan, which I've sanded to make them frosty because I like it better that way. And um, they all are zip tied up to here because um, the string is just really clunky. And this zip ties also allows me to make it very precise so they all open at the exact same time. And now, um, you can see that this is how I'm doing the, uh, uh, chain bar. And it's just a large gear here, which is fixed to here. And then there's motors with, uh, the smallest 12 feet gear going around it. There's some sprockets and chain going here. It appears this one just fell off. Um, I really need to figure out how to change this to a high strength chain. And that's a really big problem for me because I cannot just figure out how to make it work. Um, I mean, I could technically put the... The uh, thing... What words? I can't word today. I can move the uh, C-channel a little bit more this way and have the sprocket here and then like somehow move the C-channel this way so it's underneath the sprocket and chain, sorry, the chain. But, um, I don't know, I just can't really think of a better way than doing that and that doesn't seem too good, so I'll give you a demonstration of why this sometimes screws up. If I can get this chain back on. There we go. So, let me just get a cone. And if we put a cone into there, my phone's derping, you'll see that um, oh, this is first a little bit bent. This barely has enough clearance and it actually hits the chains on its way through here. Even though I made my entire robot as large as possible. These are actually outside of size constraints. I need to figure out how to put them on the inside and have this work. Um, but this is actually on the 18 inch wall. Walls of this. So I can't actually make this any bigger. So it just barely works for any of you guys trying to make this yourself. You have to make the uh, thing as wide as possible. And you also have to make everything else as wide as possible by having it as close to each other as possible. Um, yeah, like you can see this is just barely not touching this and that's by design so that way it has as much room as possible for the cone to go through. And then um, what we have here, oh yeah, I forgot to show you this. The reason why the arm was sometimes spazzing and did that in there is because this potentiometer get a wiggle. I cannot figure out a way to make this stay not wiggling, really. Don't know how to word it other than that. It just always wiggles and it causes this to like sometimes and then not actually go up. And it causes it to do what it did at the end of the video last time. Uh, let me release the cone. Oh, it appears my power expander is plugged in all night long. That's not good. Um, this is just the derpy thing I had, well, I have, to, uh, you know, just hold the mobile goal for now. It's a temporary thing, basically just pistons, pull up some things, rubber bands, they really don't pull it up very far. It really just is more to keep the mobile goal in place because I kept having it slide around. And that might have been one of the reasons, but the main reason why it stopped working is because I changed the batteries. That's right. It turns out that the chain bar was moving so fast, and the fact that the cone was catching up on this, basically what would happen is that this would get sort of like this, and then when it finally went through, it would like fling like this, and it would cause the cone to get, to fly out of the claw, and then it would just not stack on this. And uh, yeah, that's the problem I had with that. So then if we lift this up, you might be able to notice that the Vexnet key is actually here, and I have some electrical tape, the field tape from last year, which I never applied. 
on here it's very tight because I kept having it wiggle around just enough to cause it to disconnect temporarily there we go now it's in we have all the wires going down and into some cable wrap which goes down it's zip tied to this thing here and then it goes into this mess of wire. I haven't really figured out a good way to organize this. Um, this is the start of my gear train. I never really finished it. I'm starting to think I don't need it, but I really do want it because of the fact that this, as it is, at full battery, can make the cones fly out of this. I actually can get away with just having a four-motor drive. And, uh you know, have four motors on the lift and two here and then pneumatics. But, uh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for my robot. And then we have some stuff which I was using before to try to line things up. It wasn't working too well. So I just moved them all the way back. We have an LCD display, which has been a big help. Um, finally got cables for it, but, uh, yeah, I just use this, I turn off the lift, and I just read out the values of the two potentiometers, uh, the one that are here and here, to, um, the correct heights. And, uh, yeah, and then just, like, program those in. That's my robot. Thanks for watching.